Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida. And before we get started, don't forget to check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. Also, join my group on Facebook, Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. And you can always find all of the gear, everything that I carry professionally and as a hobbyist. It's all on my website and all the links are right down there in the description. All right, today we're going to talk about dynamic range. And specifically, we're going to talk about how sensor size affects dynamic range. Now, before we get started on that, let's just take a quick refresher on what dynamic range is. Uh, dynamic range, when it pertains to a camera, is, well, it's what the camera can detect between white and black, all right, between light and dark, because that's what cameras do, right? They, they sense how much light is coming into the camera, and then they reproduce that onto a photograph. So how many levels can it detect? This is usually expressed uh, just you know in a little form like this, and you can look at one end is white, and one end is black, and then in the middle, you can see all of the areas that show the dynamic range of the camera. Now, the human eye has a dynamic range of about 14 stops, which means we can see 14 different levels. It's 14 different shades of black to white. But cameras usually can't see as many as the human eye, although we are getting closer. Uh, and so how many dynamic range stops a camera can detect and then reproduce? Well, that's important. Right, Because if, if you only have two, <laughs> white and black, then everything in your picture is either pure white or pure black. And there's no nuance, there's no shade, there's no different shades of gray. So the question today is, how does your sensor size in your camera, you know, full frame, medium format, APS-C, uh, three-quarter uh, cell phone sensors, how does the sensor size affect the dynamic range? Let's get started. Now... A sensor in a camera has millions of pixels all over it. We call them megapixels. So if you have a 20 megapixel camera, then there are 20 million pixels on your sensor. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to be dealing with individual pixels. So we're going to be dealing with a sensor that only has a few pixels on it. It's just easier than dealing with all those big numbers. So let's say this whole gray area here is your sensor and it is covered in pixels. And this is a pixel. This is what collects light and then measures the light so they can create a picture. So this particular sensor has enough room for about, oh, let's say four. So this would be a four pixel sensor, right? Just four pixels, that's all it's got. So how does this work? How does this affect dynamic range? Well, the way a pixel work is, it works is it collects lights. The, the photons come pouring into the camera and they fill up this pixel like a bucket or in this case, a plate until this pixel is completely full. Now, the camera, it doesn't know. I mean, it's not a human brain. It doesn't understand light. It doesn't understand anything. It has to be programmed to understand anything at all. So it has to be told this many photons represents black and this many photons represents white. It has to be trained. It has to be taught. It has to be programmed. So what represents black? Well, the complete lack of photons represents black. So if the camera's software, right, its processor, looks at this pixel and it doesn't see any photons in here at all, then it says, that's black. That's a black pixel. And when it reproduces that pixel into your picture, it's going to reproduce that picture as being black. The complete absence of light because there's no light that hit this pixel. However, if it looks at this pixel and it is full, completely full of photons, right? It has all the photons it can have. And if I took these and I spread them around, you would see that they covered the plate. <laughs> I don't want to have to stack them back up, but it's full, completely full. It can't take any more photons. That, that then would be white, completely white. So you follow me so far? No photons is black and completely full of photons where you can't get any more light on the pixel. Well, that's completely 100% pure white, right? Okay. So what does that mean? Well, this is white. That's how many photons represent white to the camera. They will produce a pixel that is white when they see that many photons. And then this is going to represent black. Now, this isn't a photon. This represents a complete lack of photons. No photons in the plate. We're just using this as a marker. This represents no photons. So if it sees no photons, it makes the pixel black. And if it sees 
uh, all the photons that can possibly fit in there, it makes the pixel white. And if it sees some number of photons in between these two, then that's going to be various shades of gray, right? Like a deep, dark gray, all the way up to a very light gray. That is dynamic range. How many different levels can it see? How many can it read? How many can it understand? And the way we determine that is in stops. So a stop is one half of the light from the stop before it, right? So if this is white, then this, which is exactly one half the number of photons, is one stop, one stop darker. And then this would be one stop darker still. And this one stop, stop darker still. And then that would be one stop darker still. And then that and finally black. So this is white. This is black. This is everything in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This particular pixel has a dynamic range of seven stops. It can see black, white, and five different stops in between, five different shades of gray. Now, the human eye has a dynamic range of about 14 stops. So what that means is there are going to be some things that you see with your human eye that the camera can't detect. For example, my daughter today was wearing a sweatsuit and it was gray, but the pants were a little bit darker gray than the top. And I could see that because I can see 14 stops, but the camera, which can only see seven stops, if I took a picture of her, it would, it might would see that sweatsuit as being the same color. Because if it sees this color, it can reproduce it. And if it sees this color, it can reproduce it. But if it sees a shade in between the two, it will reproduce it as either this one or this one, because it can't see in between. It can only see this, 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 right? So that's a basic understanding of, of how dynamic range works with the photons that hit your pixel. So this brings us to the next question. How does the size of the pixel affect your picture? More importantly, how does it affect your dynamic range? Well, we said that this is our sensor and this is our pixel and that we can fit about four pixels, and this is a four pixel sensor. Now, what if we had a smaller sensor? What if this sensor wasn't this big? What if, say, it's cut off over here, and it would no longer fit four pixels because this part was cut off, right? It wouldn't fit. It would fit one here, one here, and then uh, that was about it. Let's say it cut off right here, okay? Well, then what would we do? We want a four pixel sensor. Well, in that case, we make the pixel smaller. So now we have a smaller sensor and in order to still have four pixels on that sensor, we have made the pixels smaller. So all four pixels can now fit into this smaller sensor. We still have a four pixel sensor, but our pixels are smaller. Now, what does that mean? Well, before this is how many photons it took to fill up our pixel. But since our pixel has gotten smaller, it cannot hold the same amount of photons. It can only hold half as many. So now this, let me get this over here. So now this is white. This is black and this is white. The maximum number of photons that can fit in this pixel represents white to the camera. So what about everything in between? Well, that's a stop. That's a stop. That's a stop. And finally, that's a stop. Look, we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we have a six stop dynamic range. And this is smaller than the dynamic range we had when we had the bigger plate because the bigger pixel could hold more photons. The more photons you have to begin with, the more ways you can slice them up to see range in the middle. 
So what does this mean practically when you're talking about your camera? Well, what it means is that, generally speaking, if you have two cameras and they have the same number of pixels, but the sensors are a different size, it will affect the dynamic range of the camera. The bigger the sensor is, the bigger the pixels are. The bigger the pixels are, the more photons the pixels can hold. The more photons they can hold, the more ways you can chop up those photons to create dynamic range. So now we understand how your sensor size, and more, more specifically, the pixel sizes on your sensor can affect your dynamic range. Now, here is the really important thing to understand. Technology, especially when it comes to camera sensors, is getting better all the time. And so we're at the point now where you can have a 20 megapixel sensor on a full frame camera that is five years old, and it will not have the dynamic range of a 25 megapixel sensor on an APS crop camera that just came out last week because they are getting better and better and better at producing really good dynamic range with smaller pixels. The technology is just getting so much better every single year. So you can't compare apples to oranges. You have to compare apples to apples. And technically speaking, you know, even today with all of the advances that we've made, that if you're using base, basic sensors that are the same technology coming out at the same time and they've got the same number of pixels on them, a bigger sensor where the pixels can be bigger will have a better dynamic range than a smaller sensor. And one of the ways that they, that they, that they fix this, what kind of fix it, is that they don't make small sensors with huge pixel counts. And the most obvious example of this is your cell phone. Right? Like I have a camera that's a 24 megapixel camera and uh, Canon's latest camera, I think it's a 45 megapixel camera and it has fantastic dynamic range, great dynamic range. But in your camera, you're lucky if you get what, maybe eight megapixels in your camera. And it's because that sensor is so small, right, that they cannot put 25 megapixels on that sensor without making the megapixels so incredibly small that they wouldn't be able to hold many photons, which means that they wouldn't have very good dynamic range. So that's why a bigger sensor typically will have more megapixels on it. All right? <laughs> a lot of math, a lot to understand in this video, I know. And if you have trouble with it, go back and watch it again. I, th I think I did a pretty good job of explaining. And as always, comment and uh, ask questions in the comments. And click like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.